Hello YouTube, I'm back again with another video. I'm going to be doing a dual video with my Gate Guardians against a Rescue Ace deck. Um, although this might sound like bad news, but um, I feel like, it, although you guys should already know by now, um, judging from the Kamiko post, if I haven't already posted it, it will be up. And as a reminder, I will be retiring from the meta. I feel like it is time for me to move on. I will continue to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I feel like, again, um, I do promise to influence you guys. And I feel as a YouTuber, I, that's something I shouldn't, I can't um, quit. Because it's my passion and I really enjoy having to like provide you guys this information. Be able to give you advice. Being able to give you new tutorials, being able to try out specific strategies, those that are unique to not many people can utilize. And I'm the one that can provide that knowledge. So it may sound like bad news in real life, but then the day I feel like I truly have to move on from this because um, if you checked from my other community post, I'm letting you guys be aware that. Um, Konami has excessively short printed cards as well as overpriced chase cards Which is why this game has become very complicated and very hard to adjust because Is there's you for those people who are starting who have the money at they can keep up, but it's this like this, this um, Constant cycle where it's just like when is it gonna end? It's just gonna keep on happening. So again I do feel that it is important that I continue doing because I do have a passion, I do have a hobby. Does that does not change my mind about this game? I do think Konami is an issue and whether they try to silence me about their uh, illegal practices because nobody likes the fact when people call them out on their negative like decisions. To be fair, that's with um, lots of companies whether it involves people in real life it just makes you understand the kind of narcissism that this world portrays and that no one wants to take accountability but at the same time you have to be friendly towards the community and there are people out there just not willing to stick their nose in and just try whether I, it's up to you i'm not i can't tell people to you can't boycott a company but some people, there are people out there that need to address this problem, and it's been proven that Konami does not care about their um, um, community. They don't try to do whatever they can to help the consumers, and consumers these days are addicted to this game. It's one thing having passion, but at the same time, you got to be aware that you you are also being the tool of that company, of somebody else. And that they don't have your best interest. Although maybe the new support that they make. But is it really worth the money? Because down the line they're not going to tell you. But eventually at some point cards are going to eventually like, drop in value. They're, they're not going to be. They're not going to be worthy down the line. Give it six, seven months of new bandless once they get reprinted. It's going to play out like throughout every um like uh power creep and what i mean power creep i don't know whether i explained it or not but powerful decks are not going to be the same throughout every single uh ban list whether especially when there's a new era of Yu-Gi-Oh, things are always going to be changed whether they may change the rules or they may limit some cards ban some cards or they make a new archetype that basically um over overwhelms other decks and what i mean by that is like people are going to be hyped seeing new cards and they feel like that's going to break the meta and the meta is 100 percent taking over it's manipulated a lot of consumers and they feel that it is important when really it's not it's just um, an easy way for konami to make a quick amount of cash and what I prefer to call it, um, a tank and ca uh, cash grab. So, 
So they're just simply trying to make as much money as possible, to be fair. That goes for a lot of companies. Um, but either way, I said too much. Let, let's continue with the duel. So as you can tell, I managed to set up my Kaze Jin, and I'll have my Sui Jin, thanks to Lab Labyrinth Heavy Tank. So with my field spell, um, he, so he's going to use Extinguish to get rid of my heavy tank. But I'm not finished yet, still my turn. So I'm going to use Soul's effect, Sing Prosperity, as well as Wall Shadow to draw two. So I forgot to mention the, uh, the Labyrinth Heavy Tank's effect was negated by Extinguish and it was destroyed. So I'm forced to draw two more cards. Uh, good thing I have talents, just in case. And now I can actually go into Gate Guardian, as you can see now. So, besides talking about Kanan, I should, I should just focus more on this duel. So, but I'm just tr trying to be real with you guys, whether you believe me or not. So, but to help you guys in the future. So, and that's also the reason why I can't really commit to come on Kanan. I can still enjoy playing Yu-Gi-Oh because. I feel like I I do vouch for you guys. You vouch for me, so I gotta be able to uh, show my appreciation for for how for what I've been through and the amount of time I had to go through to be committed to my success. So that's something I can't give up on. Um, so I'm waiting what my opponent's um, response is. He has a response to the summit, so I can't activate the double attack yet. So he's gonna use the rescues, but one thing he didn't uh, realize um, is that Gate Guardian can protect itself from targeting, which I know is Preventer has. So when he does target my monster, to three, point, three times turn, I can chain to negate that target. And I forgot to mention, I think Preventer was supposed to be destroyed, so I should, I definitely should, I should have brought it up. Uh, maybe I'm pretty sure I felt, I felt like I left. I left the I left. Uh, okay, all right. I was kind of stupid actually because it was actually meant to destroy preventer. So I was dumb. I did not realize I should. I definitely misread my card there. So because I felt not only not only like not only did he get to use effect three times for it negates effect and destroys the card. I thought in it in um. In that scenario, it'd be really broken, so it was a nerf too hard. So I kind of got the effect wrong. So, so not only does it match negate, it can also destroy the card. So, but it can always protect gate gardens combined just in case. So, he uses turbulence effect when his preventer was destroyed, he'll target my gate guardian a third time. I'll use the effect again. This will be the last time I use it. Because this is the third time that I do use it, and then his effect won't be able to go off a fourth more than that. So, so unless he has another card that can target, or doesn't have to target all that can get rid of my gate guardian, um, he's already at his last resort. So even if we were to activate something, I will chain double tax in the case just to get rid of. May, as many cards as I can, only one obviously, but as a countermeasure, I will chain with double attack if he manages to get rid of my gate guardians combined. So, whether it turns out really bad for me because I don't have a, I have a small board as you can tell, so I need to be cautious of what I'm doing. So, I want to make sure to make the most out of it, um, so which I do. So. It's twice per turn, like I mentioned. So by now he should he I'm sure he has a response with his other cards, so hopefully he doesn't manage to get rid of it because he can still get manage to get rid of it even if if I don't use up the three um, uh, targeting effects. His target effect up to three times per turn, but you we can still get around this card. It's not it's apparently uh, oppressive if you're mainly playing target cards. But you have you. There's a lot of outs to it either way. So moving forward, I'm going to my battle phase. I'm forced to attack his lifter because of hydrant. I fast forward and return set one card. 
and pass to my opponent. Um, from here on out, this is where he activates HQ in response when he chains. I mean, when he activates, I'm going to chain with double attack, wind and thunder. So now I'm able to be sure it won't be to resolve its effect because it has to be face up. Since it's a uh, field spell, then I'll use Mud Dragon's effect to change its uh, attribute. So he'll go Rhoda into one of his uh, rescue ace monsters, which is Airlifter, obviously. So he can manage to add another HQ, unfortunately. Oh man. He'll use Airlifter's effect. I'll chain. As always, you know what it's capable of. Sure. He'll banish Emergency. But unfortunately, he's going to give up. I'm guessing he just didn't really have enough outs because considering the fact Gate Garden protects itself, itself from targeting. So then again, it wouldn't be enough because of the amount of targeting he has to do. Or unless he has a card that doesn't target, he could he could have managed to actually change a uh, turn this duel around. So, but then he realized there was really no outs he had in his hand, field or graveyard, unless he uses up as many targets as he can to actually get rid of my combined. So, so that's where he submits and he admits defeat, making me the victor of this duel. And going straight to my deck profile. But I'm not going to really explain too much detail because it'll be easier for you guys to understand based on my cartridges and how I managed to like um, grasp um, my victory and what it helps to make this deck utilize to be more uh, versatile as I'm going to show you right now. Uh, obviously three Ash Blossom, three Castro Fenrir. I'll possibly do an update of the deck profile in the future. This is what I have right now. Two Kazijin. 3 Labyrinth Heavy Tank, 3 Magician Souls, 2 Sung of the Thunder, 3 Shadow Glow of the Labyrinth, 2 Isuijin, 3 uh, Double Attack Wind and Thunder, 3 Diffusion Deployment, 3 Labyrinth Wall Shadow, 3 Prosperity, 1 Ryoku, 3 Sacred, 3 Talents, 3 uh, uh, Gate Guardian of Thunder Wind, 3 uh, Wonder Water and Thunder, 2 Wind and Water, Three gate guardians combined, one bear into floor. Okay, so we have Ash Blossom in hand, and we have a caster of Fenrir on field. Or if we match some in one of our uh, gate guardian pieces to the field from our fusion monsters, one uh, dark arm the dragon annihilation. Case okay, so I use Fenrir as one of my other level seven monsters, or, or besides Fenrir, big eye. In case I want to get rid of, take over the duel and try to try to utilize a monster that is possibly broken that my opponent has that it can't overcome and obviously because we're playing Mish Souls one link Rebo and this is to showcase you guys and give you an idea I, I will I will try to explain the cards but after watching that duel I don't want to make this video as too long as possible so at least I already have an idea what was being utilized and why I feel comfortable with the card choices but um if I were to do deck profile, it's going to be in a separate video or depending uh, uh, on my mood, to be honest with you guys. But I can, I'll try to do the best I can. But it feels more interesting if I show you the deck profile after the duel. Um, but just the idea of the amount of cards that are being utilized, as well as um, the type of cards, the, the card choices. So maybe if whether you decide this is uh, the route you're going to choose. Whether you're deck building, or whether you decide to go on dueling book, or if you decide to take the approach of playing real life, you can, because personally I think that's better. Having the real life experience is different from playing online because I feel like you are achieving a lot doing that by having to go out there, meet people, and in, in interacting. And I feel like you gain a lot, of, a lot of success. You know the game better. It's different from playing online and you can be able to take that into consideration and gain more knowledge and help you improve as a player and that's way it's more important to adapt with people because because it has this structure where it's built for you to communicate and make something of yourself and you can achieve a lot more 
if you're there in public and you are the eye of somebody that that they take interest to because that's where I managed to find notice I managed to notice that there are people who took interest in me because of what I'm capable of and just just being a good role model as well as like having to provide this knowledge gives you and then giving insight of this game will help you feel more proud of yourself as well as people appreciate you for who you truly are but again i already said too much but again overall hope you guys enjoy the video be sure to check for more upcoming content later in the future be sure to check your notifications comment like subscribe thank you